Hey, nobodies, um, which I've decided just right now that I think we're going to call you if you're listening. Um, just wanted to warn you that around 13 to 14 minutes into this episode, Andy's real life nightmare plays out in real time and he and I both scream very loudly. So just a warning if you're driving or whatever, uh, know that going into it and you will hear more about it on the other side. All right. Nobody's listening, right? Hi, Andy. Hey. Is anyone listening? Oh my gosh, I have something that's going to actually really get you excited, thrilled. Great. Is anybody listening? Yes. Um, from Big Big Gem Slow Joe? Mm-hmm. I'm listening. Dot, dot, dot. Again. Love this podcast. Missed you guys and so glad to have you back. If you want to laugh out loud, you'll want to listen. We also got um, from B. Brilly Lee. I'm listening and loving. Now this is where it's going to knock your socks off. From okay. KLS202. Okay. New listener. Great. Is listening. Hey, loving yeah. this new to me podcast. <gasps> Apparently there's some history here, but I don't feel out of the loop. How did you find us, new listener? That is so exciting. That is very exciting. Uh, we got MCD Cape Cod is listening. We got GPK110 right. is listening. Okay. We got... <laughs> yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> People are listening. And we found out yesterday that a dear friend of ours is listening, which always delights me. So, what a mitzvah. <laughs> what a mitzvah. <laughs> um... I, how, how are you doing these days, Andrew? Pretty stressed out this morning. A um, lot to tell you. Okay. Uh, while I was, I ran over to Target, and uh, while I was in Target, my phone started going off because there were all these people ringing our doorbell and snooping around our cabin what? this morning. I would forgot that we had a furnace install happening this morning. Oh... Because when the furnace people, they were like, hey, the install, they told me this maybe six weeks ago. Just before we, is everything okay? Like, did they get in and whatnot? I'm telling you the story. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Do you want to stop the podcast? <laughs> well, I, I kind of. If, if, if there's supposed to be a furnace install happening, we kind of need that to happen. I know, because it's going to get cold at night. Okay. No, um... They told me like six weeks ago the install is going to be May like 2nd to 4th or something. And I thought that was like a window. Mm -hmm. Turns out it takes quite a few days to – it takes a few days to do this install. No way. Yeah, because they're redoing all the duct work and stuff like that. Oh, yes. Anyways, no no worries. Uh, uh, I hit up our boy Jim. Shout out, Jim. Um, It's all taken care of. Now, this is funny because – so what did you do in Target? Did you – Get on a phone call? First, I tried to talk through the doorbell to be because I missed them and was like, hey, anybody there? And anybody you're talking there? on your phone in a Target? Yeah. What aisle are you in? Um, I was in, I had pulled over near the women's clothing section and then I readjusted because there was a woman trying to look at some shirts and I didn't want to be disrespectful for her. Similar to the man. I'm asking this because it's just kind of funny to me oh, that gosh. you're... There's a difference. There is a difference. And? I was taking care of something and I was on my phone. Um, I wasn't on speaker phone having okay. a conversation where the other person was yelling back at mm-hmm. me and I was yelling at them. Um, so I did take that into consideration. And I also was mindful when that lady started looking at these blouses. I moved to a different part of the store. That's thoughtful. Um, and then, uh, yeah, but I couldn't. I couldn't catch the guy through the doorbell and then I got a hold of... Somebody and they they went over there, and then I was very apologetic to the furnace people, and uh, they didn't seem to care at all. I mean, I think we took care of it pretty quickly. Great, I'm sure they run into these mishaps. Okay, so uh, glad that you got that all sorted. I I wanted to give you retribution because I was at CVS the other day, waiting at the pharmacy. And there were other people waiting at the pharmacy, and there were these two guys sitting together, and one of them 
was having the loudest conversation. His phone was not on speaker, mm, okay. but I could tell that the friend was annoyed, and it was like a catching up, like, "Hey, Rick, <laughs> like, how you been, you dirty dog?" Like yeah. it was that kind of conversation, and all of us were sitting there, and I'm like, "There's this old woman who looks like she's, you know, on her last legs, like." About to die? Yeah. Uh, I'm and glad she made it to the pharmacy. She might have really needed. Well, she was there with who I assume was a caregiver getting her something. Okay. I mean, that's not fair to say last legs, but I'll be honest. <laughs> it did seem, you know, you know what, Andrew? She might be dead now. <laughs> and if that phone call didn't take her over the edge... Wow. Um, no, I'm just kidding. But um, anyway, I definitely thought of you and I was like, this is extremely fucking annoying. We're all kind of stuck here. And now we got to listen to you talking to Rick. Now imagine if you also. He is a dirty dog. I'll tell you that. Imagine if you also heard Rick talking through the speaker. You, It might be a little bit more intriguing in this particular case because yeah. you're stuck there. But also, it does take up the obnoxious level a yes. bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. Um, now, you and I are sitting right now doing this. There's some sort of crazy astrological transit happening or something. I don't know what's going on. But mm. I have felt, and I sense that you have too, a level of anxiety creeping in. Oh, interesting. Would you say that's true? Well, it's funny. I wanted to talk about anxiety today. No joke. Mm. Um, but th th I wasn't thinking about it in that realm at all. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it in a much more mundane way. Let's start with your anxiety, and then we'll talk about mine. Okay, well, I'll tell you about mine. Mine is multiple levels. One, first of all, I wanted to say I've been having a great time with our kids, and I feel this anxiety I had before, I feel like I've shed, and I'm actually not actually I am very much enjoying my time with them and it feels way 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 less stressful I truly think I was projecting what pandemic parenting was onto this month with them mm. whereas that's not the case at all we can go do things we're having fun together I feel like I'm hopeful we're making like core memories I'm craving like a trip with them where yeah. we can like form real core memories um so that anxiety is not really percolating. What I have found, and I remember this at different stages of my life. Well, there are a couple things going on. One is, I think when I don't have a lot of work taking up my time, mm -hmm. I fill it with like this m stuff that I'm like, my to-do lists triple in size with stuff that I was doing before just as part of life. Like now it's like, laundry becomes this thing that I whereas before I would just do laundry in between like mm -hmm. when I was going popping into the studio and it's just like autopilot mm -hmm. but it's stuff like getting my typewriter service <laughs> like things that oh yeah you things know like that that did are, you see your typewriter has like a little sticker somewhere you got to take it to the lady I got it from oh I didn't see that okay great oh yeah she's the best well I'm glad I brought this up <laughs> yeah but, you know, things like this where I'm like, I don't really have to do this. Like, yep. are the chairs, do you remember the goddamn chairs? <laughs> These chairs uh, that I found on the street oh. over a year ago or maybe a year ago. It might have yeah. been a year ago. Yeah. That I spent countless hours sanding and then I stained them and the staining was a mistake. The stain doesn't look great, and so now I want to paint them. And I went and bought all of this stuff to paint them. These We haven't talked about this at all. That's what that thing is? Let's come back to that, because that's uh, a whole conversation. God. Let's put a pin in that. But anyway, okay. anxiety. I just find that now I'm chock full of... My anxiety always manifests in, like, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I have too many things to get to, which I know when I take a step back, I'm like, I really don't. I don't have to do actually anything. Like, until I pick the kids up, I literally don't have to do anything. Yeah, you've, and you work two years straight. I think it's nice you're taking a little break. But, um, you know, that's, and then there's the anxiety of like wondering if our show is getting picked up and blah, 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 and all of those things that creep in a couple times a day. But, um, 
Also, the other thing is I'm now convinced, and I do this all the time, I am like the worst about thinking I have, you know, my muscles twitching, therefore I must have Lou Gehrig's disease. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm pretty sure... (laughs) 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 I'm pretty sure I have my thyroid's out of whack. Okay. Can I tell you what the symptoms are? Sure. Um, how um, how gentle do you want me to be with, with this right now? I'd like you to enter this with an open mind. Okay. Okay. But can I keep it real a little yes. bit? Yes, of Great. course. Keep okay. it real. Sure. Um, the symptoms of it are like fatigue. Yeah. Check. Okay. Um. Feeling cold a lot. Okay. Hmm. Uh, check? You want me to say check? <laughs> yeah, I do. I want you to say check. I think you need to give your own check. Crazy periods. Check. <laughs> uh, weight gain. No. Uh, I mean, I weigh you every morning, so <laughs> I'm pretty in touch with that kind of in direct conflict with our previous conversation (laughs) a little detail i should have shared uh okay wait what are the symptoms hang on let's anyway i'm i'm concerned so i'm going to the doctor next week that's That's great that's great that's great a few things to say okay first just let's just talk about those symptoms yes those are so general and your period one, which is super valid, but you only had one of those periods. Oh, I've... dry skin, dry skin. That was the thing that sent me on this whole whole thing. Okay, yeah. and and you're talking about localized dry skin. Oh, on top of it, uh-huh. slow heart rate. Which I don't know if I have a slow heart rate, but what I do know is I've been having like heart palpitations. Okay, none of this sounds great. <laughs> that one doesn't sound great. Uh, but I think those symptoms are pretty. Um, are pretty that could be those symptoms come with all sorts of things from serious things like this to maybe being a little stressed out and having anxiety which you just talked about before uh but i think it's very good that you're going to see the doctor yeah i will say that i looked it up for dry skin Mm -hmm. and then what do i find heavy periods a Yes, yes, like, yes, yes. I know what you're saying. Like, all of these things could be s- s- related to other things. But the truth is, we'll find out soon enough. We will. And I think it's great. And I do think, here, here's the funny thing about you. You do have a very, you have a very high threshold for pain and for discomfort. Um, but you do often leap to, like, a diagnosis Why of stuff. Why on earth would I do that, do you think? Um... Because you know people that have died? Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Because my, you know, my grandmother had Lou Gehrig. fucking wait hold on oh my fucking god Andy. <laughs> oh no holy shit Okay. What the fuck? Oh boy. <laughs> wow. That's this is some behind the scenes. Okay. That was very upsetting. Do 
we say, do you want to know my experience of what that, what had happened? Or you want to say what happened and then I'll tell you my experience. Let me say what just happened. Holy shit. <sighs> um, <laughs> to anyone listening, I'm sorry if we just blew out your ears. I'll fix that in post. We're talking, I think I was mentioning my grandmother's ALS and Andy all of a sudden <laughs> put his hands on his headphones and just fucking slammed them across from him, which actually was basically right to me. So they landed on the couch next to me. And the way he did it I, I scared me so but it turns out there was a fucking pincher bug slithering around inside of his earphones, headphones. Holy shit. Okay. I've been growing my beard out. So I have, I'm, I'm experiencing like new facial, like, um, sensations, sensations okay. and like weird hairs. Okay. And I kept being like, why is my ear itching and i don't know if you've seen Ugh. i've listen no, i've adjusted no. my ear like three times in the last five minutes okay oh god and i was like is there hair underneath the the headphone or something so i kept adjusting it and then it kept happening i'm like what the fuck is that Andy. and then finally when i looked in it there's a goddamn bug in it and it's my fucking nightmare. Bugs in my ear is yes. like the worst to me. I think about it a lot. <laughs> I really do. I really think about it a lot. I fucking, the idea of bugs going in my ear, dry, like I've thought about like being, I will be a crazy guy at the emergency room, like screaming, like you have to fucking see me now. You have to get it out now. Like I will lose my Andy, mind. This is very upsetting. How do you even have your headphones on right now? Well, it's not in there now. I, I mean, I hope there's not like a family of them in there. I looked at them. Oh. God, that was a near miss. An ear, I, near <laughs> ear miss. So, Holy anything shit. else going on with your anxiety? <laughs> I think that was a justified response. So, anyways, your grandma had ALS. <laughs> Okay, so I'm paranoid about that. I'm paranoid about pancreatic cancer. I'm paranoid yeah. about heart stuff because my dad died of a heart attack, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. whatnot, yeah. stuff, things such as yeah. whatever. Yeah. So there we go. I totally get it. But it, it is, you know, it all makes sense. And I think it's great. Um, I think it's great that you're going to get checked out. Yes. That's amazing. Thank you. How how about your anxiety? It's so much more mundane. And like, I go through those times where I'm worried about the bigger things in life, work stuff, uh, kids stuff, all like bigger stuff, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which you mentioned, which I feel like is how it manifests more for you. Mm -hmm. You are also talking about like, you are like adding to your plate and adding all these little things, which maybe, maybe that might fall into the mundane thing. Yes. But sure. my anxiety is much more like, do I bag the groceries or not at Trader Joe's? Yeah. Like, and I will think about it. You don't. I just want to say this at Trader Joe's. You don't. Oh, but mo I would say more than half people do. No. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. We are in the minority. I no, think. no, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna start taking a look around. But yeah. they take like classes. I mean, they learn Trader Joe's employees are artists at bagging. Like they learn how to do it in a way. And every time I go to Vaughn's, I'm like, what are you doing? Because Yeah, sometimes it's I think at at Vaughn's, yes. You know, I think it depends on the situation. So you're bagging sometimes at Vons. Yeah. Interesting. But at Trader Joe's, I never do. I let the artists do their art. Anyways, that's I will think <laughs> about that trip to the grocery days before I go to the grocery store. Are you serious? Yeah. Andy. I wanna think I wanna give you another like well, example. Well, I know sometimes you get really hung up and I hope it's okay if I share this. Like 
if you're texting someone back or anytime there's a text where there's oh, sure. like an emotional weight to it, especially if it's like if someone's going through something and you're checking in, you always like want to workshop it with me first in a way. But sometimes there are texts that I'm like, just send them the phone. Yeah, sure. But you're like kind of get stuck in a like, how should I, I don't know. Yeah. You get caught up in your own thoughts. Yeah, that's another version for sure. Um, now, do you think this is part of OCD? Maybe. Oh, I'll give you another great example. Okay, this is great. Okay. We had some friends over this weekend, and you were going to get bagels. Okay? This is, this is, this is going to be a very transparent share with you. Sorry. Now, I've never been to that bagel store. Okay? And I know that you wanted to get those bagels that morning. Okay? Mm-hmm. There was other stuff that we needed to get before our friends came over, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I was like, I need to get that stuff at the grocery store. And I was nervous that you were going to ask me to get the bagels because I don't know how that bagel place works. Ah. And then I was so relieved. I even looked on my phone at what time the bagel place opened. <laughs> and it was 8 o'clock, and I was like, I'm going to go to the grocery store at 7 a.m. Oh, my God. Isn't that fucking crazy? It is. I know. <clears throat> but it's, you know, I'm not discounting, like, f f that's your reality, and it's... Yeah, and I know it's, I know there's a lot of people share, <coughs> share with that. Sorry. But I can remember the first time of telling you an example of that and you being like, Whoa. Well, it really and, explains. We get frustrated sometimes because you're like, if we're going to a movie, you have so much anxiety about when we're going to get there um, or a flight. Yeah. Like, whereas I get there on time, but I don't have the, like, you've plotted it out mm -hmm. in a way. And I'm curious if... Um, in your life, are there times where this doesn't feel as overwhelming? Because, like, are there times when we're, like, going to a friend's party and we're just going to go and you can kind of just, like, be like, we're going to a party and not think about, like, how are we going to get there? And, like, what's it going to be like? And what's the setup going to be? And is there going to be, like, a bar? Mm, or are we, you know? Not, not usually. That's always there. Yeah. Like, if we're going somewhere to something. But once I'm there... I'm not I'm not in my head at the party usually if that makes sense. When you back in your therapy days mm -hmm. was this sort of thing discussed? Hmm. Not really, not mm. to a big extent. Cuz I think it takes up a lot of bandwidth. Space in your Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, sure. Like it's I feel sorry for you. I think that that's um, a lot to carry just to, like, go about your life. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And I, this is not to point fingers or anything, but mm -hmm. sometimes I think that affects our relationship. Oh, brother, here we go. What do you think? Negatively. And that sometimes... Um, Oh, and I hate to make like, you know, we learned in couples therapy not to make like a wide brush universal statement without yeah. a specific. So I'm trying to think of a specific. I think there was one somewhat recently. Um, oh, gosh, I, you might remember when it was. Hmm. Something happened recently where I was like, I think you double check my work a lot. In the sense of, like, I'm, like, I'm going to go, oh, it was something about what time a store opens or whatever. Oh. And I'm, like, I'm going to go to the store. And you were, like, I don't your anxiety yeah. already is kicking in. Like, I don't think the store is open yet. And I'm, like, it is. And you're, like, you said, like, something along the lines of, like, I don't think it is. And it... That sort of transaction really bothers me because mm -hmm. a lot of times it's like, 
do you think I didn't check to see if the store, like, I know what I'm doing. You don't need to, you double check my work sometimes. Yeah. <clears throat> but that was, uh, I mean, it's very minor, obviously. It's no, 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 no. But that's, that's a good example of that. But um, I wonder how you can address that sort of underlying anxiety. Yeah. Because that's exhausting, Andy. That has to be really tiring for you. And also limiting in the sense of like, you didn't want to go to the bagel place, but guess what? Those bagels are delicious. Yeah, but you went to the bagel place, I know, but what if I died? Then I would go to the bagel place. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Treat yourself to a bagel. Your wife is gone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'd do that. Okay. I do things. I just stress out about them beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, I read a Twitter. This might be shifting gears a little bit. Did you want to expand on this topic? No, 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 no. <clears throat> I read a Twitter thread that I wanted to share that I just think is really beautiful and might inspire us. And this was Gabe at Gabe Hudson. He's an author, um, editor at McSweeney's. Okay. In 2006, a high school English teacher asked students to write a famous author and ask for advice. And Kurt Vonnegut was the only one to respond. And his response was a doozy. Um, uh, Dear Xavier High School and Miss Lockwood, a bunch of people. I thank you for your friendly letters. You sure know how to cheer up a really old geezer in his sunset years. I don't make public appearances anymore because I now resemble nothing so much as an iguana. What I had to say to you, moreover, would not take long to wit. Here it and colon. Practice any art, music, singing, dancing, acting, drawing, painting, sculpting, poetry, fiction, essays, reportage, no matter how well or badly, not to get money or fame but to experience becoming, to find out what's inside you. To, this makes me almost want to cry. It's so beautiful. To make your soul grow. Seriously. I mean, starting right now. Do art and do it for the rest of your lives. Draw a funny or nice picture of Miss Lockwood and give it to her. Dance home after school. Sing in the shower and on and on. Make a face in your mashed potatoes. Pretend you're Count Dracula. Here's an assignment for tonight, and I hope Miss Lockwood would flunk you if you don't do it. Write a six-line poem about anything, but rhymed. No fair tennis without a net. Make it as good as you possibly can. But don't tell anybody what you're doing. Don't show it or recite it to anybody, not even your girlfriend or parents or whatever, or Miss Lockwood, okay? Tear it up into teeny-weeny pieces and discard them into widely separated trash receptacles. You will find that you have already been gloriously rewarded for your poem. You have experienced becoming, learned a lot more about what's inside you, and have made your soul grow. God bless you all. Oh, that is so, so sweet. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And it makes me um, think about, you know, I, I've talked about how when several friends of mine and I did this San Pedro ceremony where we drink cactus juice and tripped and also like our partners were at home with our babies and... <laughs> It's yeah. very wild. But the message I felt like I received from my parents or the other side or whatever it was, was like, have more fun, lighten up. Don't take things so seriously. Like, be absurd, find joy, mm -hmm. you know, be silly. And also, I, I feel like in our worlds and what we do, there can be this need to be taken very seriously we all want respect. We all want like to create art that other people are like, wow, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Versus just delighting in silliness and absurdity mm -hmm. and making crap, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Which I want to be a little bit more in touch with. I love that. I mean, I'm, that resonates so much for me. And I feel like there's been, uh, I've wrestled, you know, I've had over the years, I've had some projects, even secret projects that have just been creative outlets for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've, I've tried to wrestle with, um, uh, uh, 
Um, how much are how are those sometimes just like procrastinating too much mm -hmm. or sometimes but like the other day <clears throat> I was working with an artist and we were looking for sometimes I'll tune my guitar to like weird alternative tunings mm -hmm. um, and we had done a song that we had started a while ago that had a really weird tuning and I was like oh, and we didn't write it down and we're like God I got to figure out what the hell that was and I went back through this app where I used to in the mornings just write for 30 minutes on guitar. Yeah. And I found in those writing, I would write out the tunings. Mm -hmm. And I found the tuning and I was like, why don't I do that anymore? It's like such a good muscle to do. And it was for nothing mm -hmm. except in my mind. And I think is almost just like channeling whatever that uh, magic is. Mm-hmm. In hopes of being more open to that magic when I'm with a person and doing this for my job, sort of. Right. But I was like, that is such a nice thing. It's like meditating. Or like, I should do yeah. the, that little thing. Because it is, there. you have no agenda except right. to just see what comes out of thin air, which I think is really cool. I do, too. Yeah. I know. It's it's Then this becomes an anxiety of like, how do I find the time to... Sure. But now, right now, I'm like, you know... We used to have dance parties after dinner mm -hmm. all the time. Like, where did that go? Yeah. We should pop on some music and have sure, a little dance party with the kids. Yeah. What a fun, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Just being goofy and silly and having fun. Yeah. I was listening to um, this interview with uh, Michael Stipe, the lead singer of R.E.M., Mm. who's now in his 60s mm -hmm. and is like just started making music again as a solo artist mm. um and it was really interesting to hear him him talk and actually this might be a totally different thing but he was he was kind of bitching about LA um and the idea of like I think he was saying like in New York you just know where you stand with people where in LA What does that mean? Like <clears throat> I think he, he, the comparison he was making is like um, in L.A., everybody wants something and needs something in L.A. And so everyone's kind of full of shit or like you just don't know if people are being real or not. Where he was making the argument that in New York, um, like people like stuff or they don't like stuff. And like you can kind of tell. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny. I had this conversation not about Michael Stipe, but about something different um, with a producer friend that spent like 10 years in New York and 10 years here. And he was very much like, that was one of the hardest things when he moved to LA is everyone just being like, yeah, we got to do something. Or like, I love that. Where he's like, I would have, he was using an example of like a &R people in New York just being like, yeah, I don't like that one. What else do you have? Where that right. would never happen in LA. That was an exa interesting example. Yeah, um, that is so interesting. I mean, it is... It does make me like when we first moved here, we were very depressed for a few months, remember, because we didn't see anyone. Everyone's like, sure, maybe in like November. And we sure, were like, sure. what? Yeah. But now we're those people. <laughs> but but the other interesting thing I was thinking about was um, just being in the town like this that has so many people in entertainment trying to do things in that regard. Um, it is such a huge group of people that want to be liked. Everyone wants to be liked, right? Yes. But it's such a huge group of people whose careers kind of depend on being right. liked. And I was listening to some other podcasts where they were making a point of like, you just think of like insert like rich businessman's name. Mm -hmm. And like, they don't give a fuck about being liked, you know, or a lot of them. Like yes. to a much different extent oh, where totally. our existence is like, do you like the song that I make? Do you like the music? Do you like the script that I wrote? Do yeah, you like, me. Which is just like, it's intense, sort of. It is intense. I don't know how we got here exactly, but hopefully it makes sense. For no, what it does. About. I do want to say one thing that's interesting, I think, and relevant is, um, you know, I, I, this is not, the, the parallel is not right exactly, but I was thinking, like, I even was talking about you know, not really caring for someone in the industry, but of course, like, I don't think they're a bad person or anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But if you saw me say, he'll greet them at a party, you would think I love this person. <laughs> right, right, totally. So like, totally. I'm totally phony, but I yeah, also yeah. think that women 
and non-binary people have had to play this game their entire lives. It's like women writing like, but no worries if not. Or I was just wondering, instead of like men feel the freedom to be like, where's that report? I expected it yesterday. Mm. Like the uh, survival requirement for women to basically, I mean, essentially in this instance, kind of be phony. Yeah is the the bar is so much higher for us like i you know it's it's just a whole different a whole different set of rules apply basically and so i'm just something that popped into my little head no it makes total sense sorry if i I didn't mean to (laughs) just kidding (laughs) um but yes i mean i also think that there's something about there's also like choosing your battles, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, oh, and also I think um, not being there's is the social aspect of it. Like, there's no reason that you need to go out of your way to make someone know that you're not a fan of them, mm-hmm. right? Um, but there is probably a there might be a better example than like gushing, like we all kind of do. Like, there are times where I am nice to someone where I'm like afterwards, like, why the fuck did you like, why give them the impression that like, why blow that much smoke up their ass? Yes. Like there is probably like, I probably should have toned it back. Where you like something, but was it life changing or whatever? No. And I mean, it's similar to like, was I a fan of Madonna's? Yeah. Just like everyone who grew up in the eighties. Sure. Yeah. Like, if I met her, would I act to her as though she changed my life forever and ever? Right. Probably. <laughs> right. That's really funny. That's really <laughs> because funny. Because in that moment, I probably would convince myself of that. Right. Like, right. But, um, and also, and there's this weird, I think, desperation to, like, connect with someone, and they receive so much of that that you're, yeah. I mean, I don't know, it gets into, like, craziness, but... At the end of the day, like this Kurt Vonnegut thing, I'm like, none of it. I'm I'm having like a real existential time in my life right now. Yeah. We've been talking about death a lot. Yeah. Like our kids are asking questions that are really interesting. One of them's playing a video game. That's y- Oh, yeah. That game. So there's some game called Arise. Mm-hmm. A Simple Story, I think it is. Mm-hmm. The premise is it starts off you like get. You're a Viking, I think, that gets, like, burned out in the water. Each level, you're going through your entire life. Unlocking memories. And finding these, like, important memories. So the first level, he there's, like, one memory that he finds is just a picture of him kind of by himself. And in the background, there's other kids playing. And our son got it, was like, yeah, they're not playing with him. Oh. And then on that same level, another memory he finds, though, is, like, a um, something special that happened with some girl. So it's like this girl wasn't like these other kids. Oh my gosh! But it's like I'm kind of I kind of want to play the game after our son does because I'm like and it's a beautiful game. And I will yeah. also say, uh, I mean, for people who I we have such an open dialogue about death and dying, and in a way that like I'm kind of amazed. And I mean, maybe it's all a mistake, but I feel like. Our kids have a comfort level with the subject matter that I for sure didn't have. I mean, I never. So this game to him, I don't think is upsetting in any way. And it's a really beautiful. No, and I don't think I'm I'd be curious if there are any kind of hard parts. But my guess is by the time you get to the end of the game, it's a very sweet ending, I'm guessing. Yeah, I think the guy is kind of in between world b- before have yeah, and I'm I think this is like he has to do all this stuff to go to heaven or something like that. I don't mm-hmm. know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking heaven! I don't fucking know. But um, I have been listening to like Eckhart Tolle and mm. feeling very like I wish he wasn't so creepy vibes because he's got some nice thing to say, but. Do you know, does that resonate Well, some of it really, I mean, some of it's really challenging to a degree that I'm, like, put off by it. Mm -hmm. Um, And, of course, he's also human. Uh, Like, 
I don't want to make him some sort of prophet or deity or anything. Like, yeah. I don't agree with everything he says. I really don't. Yeah. I don't think anyone should. But there's a beauty in my understanding, and I'm sure I'll butcher this, but this is just like the way I have processed what I've been listening to, is that our, like, basically that nothing truly matters and it's kind of going back to what I was saying like this idea of like have fun be absurd like don't mm -hmm. take things so seriously um it's not to discount if you're truly feeling very sad or if you're in a really hard time of course that matters but I think that the baseline of our essence and who we are is like consciousness which is basically just the space in our brain or this space in our lives where we are not defined by our thoughts like he describes it as, as like the space between thoughts basically where we are have awareness we are alive but we are not our thoughts mm -hmm. and I mean for to what you're talking about anxiety and these thoughts of like how am yeah. I gonna da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. and I think those also manifest for you as feelings in your body sure yeah they can for sure which you have to acknowledge and let them be felt and passed but there's also this like baseline security net of I don't have to be anything other than just here mm -hmm. and something that can really bring you back to that is like being in nature or like the feeling of when you wash your hands like just even water in your hands and being like there's a sensation of water in my hands like yeah. things like that and that it's really freeing because I think that it makes you start to feel like that is enough. And so that makes me feel free. This probably isn't the point of it, but to be phony if I need to be and to be like, it's all okay. Yeah. Because none of it really matters. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. if me gushing overly about something makes someone feel better, great. If it has no effect, that's fine. But I don't, I don't know. It's kind of, it helps to release me from judgment of myself and of other people yeah. and their behavior. And um, this conversation, though, does make me think about remember at La Mill, there was a barista there who I was in line once and they were like talking about moving to Portland. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, because I do have this like, I love the idea of Portland and yeah. also I was very happy for them because it yeah. seemed like a big move that they were taking and they were excited about. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh my God, that's so awesome. They weren't even talking to me. They were talking about the customer in front of me. Yeah. I was like, that's so cool. Like, when are you moving? And, and she was like, oh, in a couple months, do you, you're from Portland? And I realized in that moment, like my over enthusiastic reaction would have seemed fucking crazy if I wasn't from there or had some connection to Portland. The truth is, at the time, I had never been there. Right. And so I said yes. <laughs> it's taken it to such an extreme. <laughs> and I, I was like, but then I was like, I forget what lie I told either. I said, yes, I'm from there or I, I lived there for a while or yeah I don't think you said you're from I there. don't think I did maybe that would I was be, like that I, would be that would be crazy is what that would be <laughs> maybe I went to school there or I just had visited and loved it but it was to the degree that I actually told you so then it became a thing with us when she saw me she would say what's up Portland <laughs> <laughs> And I was in too deep. And at that point, I'm like, listen, she's going to Portland in a few months. Like, do I explain? Like, I... So here's the truth is I've never even been there, but I feel like I really like it or what, I would love it. <laughs> what's so funny, and I, this just dawned on me because I, I think a lot of people can relate, but I feel like I don't know if I've ever had to be like to you, like, hey, by the way... <laughs> We're going to maybe see these people where it's like you tell me that stuff all the time. <laughs> and What's like, another I, example? Oh, man. I feel like I feel like within the last year, there's been 
I mean, I actually think there's probably been stuff recently of like. But to be clear, it's not a lie. I mean, this is one of the only examples where I got in such a lie vortex where it just wasn't worth like what I would burden her with by coming clean from the lie was just not worth it for her. Like, do you know what I mean? It was like. It was a lie I got in too deep on, and I told you, by the way, when we go to Long Mill, she probably will call me Portland. I lied about this thing and just go with it. Because at that point, like, it's so stupid. It's so fucking but I, funny. I don't lie so frequently that I have to, I just want to clarify. I think No, you're not a liar, too, by the way. Listen, I cannot, I, um, I have very big hard time with liars yes so much so um that like i cut them out of my life yes um and maybe in some cases like when i don't even really need to but people that are untruthful it's more that i i can't trust if i can't trust somebody mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i'm guessing it makes me feel unsafe right right yes um that's not what you have going on <laughs> your examples are the portland one's great or your you know, maybe it's like a white lie about like having to cancel something or something. Oh, like, that's it's what it is. Of that kind of variety. Yes. It's like very harmless right. um stuff. But I'm the worst person to remember that data. Right, right, right. I my memory's so bad where people have like a conversation with me and I'll realize later like Oh, yeah, they were on the podcast. That's what they were talking about. Like, I won't put things together Mm -hmm. like that I've spent like two hours talking with someone about this thing. Right. Like, I, 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 I don't keep stuff. I had a moment. I was like, oh, we can talk about this very quickly. Or like, how deep into this podcast are we? I have no idea. Um, But I had a moment recently. I was like going through my old Twitter stuff. And realized that we had guests on Totally Lame that I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> I didn't know that we had her on. Like, that's amazing. I love her. I'm such a fan of hers. Right. That like you could see and talk to and be like, it's so nice to meet you. And then yes. being like, we, we've met. I, yeah. And I would be like, house. yeah. And, and I would be like, there's no world we met because I'm I, I adore you. I'm a fan of yours. Right, right. How how long are we into this? Um, like forty five minutes, I think. Okay, let's talk about this very quickly. Okay. Um. Now, so I was looking back through Twitter. Mm-hmm. This was jarring. I have deleted a lot of tweets, <laughs> but I realized, like, I must have done a batch deletion which only deleted so many tweets, but then like my tweets from 2009 and 2010, like when I first started on Twitter, were still there. Okay. And seeing the person I was, was very upsetting. Like, first of all, I guess no one really knew what Twitter was, but it was like, I think back then the, either the Facebook or the Twitter, like, uh, lead in was like Elizabeth lame is. And I was like off to the grocery store. Like, I tweeted so often and it was like pretty stupid, Mm. stupid things. Okay. Then I also seemed to think it was some sort of like, it was a personal, like I was tweeting at my friend Lily as like, though we were making social plans, like, Hey, what are you up to today? Do you want to meet up for blah, blah, blah? Like as though it was texting. Yeah. Which was baffling. Sure. Then I was so, um, shameless about booking guests on the podcast, which I guess worked. And this is where I get into like, there were people we had on that I'm like blown away. I'm, I'm pretty impressed by us, I have to say. Okay. But back then being like, I, I found the first original tweet to Paul F. Tompkins, yeah. who now I count as a friend. But at the time was like, Mark Marin did it. Natasha Legero did it. Like, And are you adding Mark Marin and Natasha Legero? don't think so but i wouldn't put it past me yeah um there was a tweet i saw with um kathy ireland the supermodel 
wait that vaguely did she we have agreed like a... to come on the podcast and i'm and and That's like we right. had it back and forth and i was like oh my god and then for some reason it just never happened but why were we trying to get her on the show i, I feel like we had some like no, fun and gag going or something i have no idea but anyway uh, then there was but then there were tweets that were awful mm -hmm. and i will say i'm, I'm going to be very vulnerable right now there were tweets like i used the r word in a tweet mm, yeah. and that is like my i think i've talked about it even on nobody's listening right like if someone and people still use it freely i feel like i heard it recently used where i actually like, think it's making a comeback it, I, it feels like to me and i'm just like that is the most like we i think we've talked about the the sense of for that to be funny is so uh i mean it's obviously offensive but it's also just like you're punching down to the lowest denominator of yourself yeah to think that that would be okay to use and funny and it's just like it's just so gross to me and um it's it's beyond even ignorance is a choice people make and it's one i made but i think i, I i'm gonna defend you in a weird way here or it's not a weird way um one it's cool that you're owning up to this right and you don't have that feeling at all anymore or you would never use that word mm -hmm. but i also think there is a lot to be said about um the time when things happen in the context i mean there was a black eyed peas song during that yes. time with that word in the title. So there really is. Right, 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 you right. You really have to like, that is a part of the conversation. And we've also had this conversation of people that we know that do still say that they're usually our age because yes. we, that what it was. So I think I'm not giving you a pass. I think it's very cool that you're owning up to it and you're like. And, yeah, it's not okay now. Right. It's not okay now. But I do think like. um that's just part it has to be part of the conversation sort of it's not a, i'm not making any excuses yeah it's just int it's an interesting thing about language but what i will say is i'm proud of our evolution like you know so much like of this wokeness is you know the word woke now has a negative connotation yeah and i'm like so proud of us collectively of there's this move towards kindness and inclusivity and awareness we have a long, long way to go. But like I look at my our kids and how kind they are. And some of the tweets I tweeted, I'm going to say one of them and it's horrible, but it just like gives a perspective of, I thought this was funny. And it was, um, we can all agree that Kate Gosselin can... <laughs> Don't. <laughs> okay, this is the problem. Say it's it. just so say ridiculous. It. Say it. This is something I tweeted. We can all agree that Kate Gosselin can die now, right? That was my tweet. That I'm was, laughing I at took, how absurd it is. It's so absurd. I know you're not it's, laughing at the tweet. It's, it's just the most mean-spirited. And I look at my kids now, and this goes also along with, in my early 20s, I um, went to Europe for a couple months by myself. I backpacked around. I had like broken up with my first live-in boyfriend that was like not a good for me relationship. I was totally lost. I had no, like I felt so alone in the world and I was like, now's a good time to go travel. And it was both the most wonderful and hardest thing I've done. Like it was very lonely, but I documented it in this way. I also found David Sedaris during this. Mm -hmm. Like he, it was at a library. I had We're going to circle back to the Goslin of this. Yeah, all. we are. are we? Okay. It's, this is related, okay, oddly enough. Okay, I just double checking. I found David Sedaris. I think I was in Italy. I had been very, or maybe I was in Spain. I had been very, very sick and felt very alone. Um, like was this is before cell phones. Like to to communicate with people back home meant like finding an internet cafe. So I actually hadn't like talked to a human in English in over a week and mm -hmm. I was kind of losing it and I was not feeling well. And I found David Sedaris on like an outside library used bookstore or whatever. And it was in English and I was like, Oh my gosh. And I, I devoured it and it became my friend. Mm -hmm. And I started writing 
like journal entries in the vein I thought sure. <laughs> of yeah, David yeah. Sedaris. Yeah, yeah. Which he has some like biting and scathing observations, sure. and but it's artful. Mm-hmm. And what my 21 year old self was doing was just being mean about people. Sure. And so mean. Like, I wrote a whole entry about this girl who kind of, in in the entry, I wrote globbed on to me at a train station. Yeah. Because she was scared because she had been, like, robbed at knife point in another city. What a pussy. (laughs) And I was trying to, I was annoyed by her needing to be with me. (laughs) Hey, at least you're keeping it real on the journal. I don't know, but I'm like, when I see our kids and how kind they are and how aware of kindness they are versus like what I thought was funny or, and I'm just very grateful because we've talked about this, like our parents' generation's sense of humor. Now I'm using a wide brush. I know there are many exceptions, but this idea that like being mean is funny yeah seems to be we've talked to friends like kind of across the board that generation has this vibe around that and i'm so grateful that because of like woke culture or whatever we've sort of evolved out of that even our doctor mentioned i was like and he's older Mm -hmm. he's our parents generation and I love him. Yeah. Um, but he, you know, last time I saw him, he was like, and what are you writing on? And I was like, oh, it's a drama. I'm whatever. I'm glad to be on a drama. Um, and then he was like, yeah, well, you can't say like, you can't be funny in comedy anymore. You can't say anything without offending someone. And I'm just like, Ugh, right, right. of course you can. Right. I didn't say this. I was like, yep. But the truth is like, no. You can say non-offensive things that are very funny, and it's actually just kind of lazy to to lean on meanness, or you know, or being offensive is funny. Yeah, but that's just a mindset, and I'm glad that I feel like by the skin of our teeth, our generation has evolved out of that. Yeah, and I think every generation does. I think it's. I think it's a. I, that's what I think is interesting about it. I think it's a constant evolution. I think even. If we look back at like what our grandparents, uh, the kind of comedy that they thought was funny and whatnot, like it's a con- it's a constantly moving target, mm-hmm. um, and it, it seems like in many ways it's be it, it's having a, a better heart or something that target, which is nice. Now let's look at the Kate Gosselin tweet. So okay, to go back to the Kate Gosselin tweet, what is what some people might not even remember is. Yeah, that's it's punch and low, uh, the tweet. But at that time, she was on the cover of every fucking magazine of everyone trashing her. So you were piling on to a thing that was in the culture that was in the air. You weren't. Do you know what I mean? Like, it does feel shitty and it was shitty. Yeah. But like they're like. That is the weird power of culture, too. But I also wonder, like, I don't even remember what the messaging was about her being the bad guy. Because the truth is, of course, it was the mom in this world who was attacked and who I joined in the attacking of. Well, they both got dragged under the bus, for sure. I don't think he did as much. And I think not. no one deserves anything, I guess. I don't know. But, like... If you're looking at it objectively, I think that she fell prey to misogyny and um, I definitely bought into that. I mean, like not only in that tweet, I think I was like looking back at my UCB days. There was like looking back at my old sketches, a lot of misogynistic shit. And part of me thinks that was like for survival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Let's use a more, and we'll wrap this up soon, but let's use a more um, extreme example. Let's use an example of the cliche, like, I wish Trump would just die already type of tweet, which Mm -hmm. there are millions of those tweets on Twitter, right? Or like, remember when he got COVID and all, there were all the uh, sassy tweets about that, you know, him getting COVID. Okay. I may have tweeted fingers crossed, but okay, (laughs) great example though. Okay, yeah, not going to age as well as you might think. 
like 30 years from now, maybe, or 40 years from now, if like one of your grandkids saw that tweet and was like, you wanted the president to die? Like yeah. it won't age as well. But during the time there was a collective group of people right. that felt that that tweet was appropriate, funny, yeah. um, of the moment. But like, on, it, and as much as someone like yourself might loathe that person, right. it still probably wouldn't age that well 20 or 30 years from now. That's true. I mean, this is on a morning, I think it came out that his like AG published a book or something that was after George Floyd, Trump was telling, like saying to the police, like, can you just shoot him? To the protesters. Oh my god. So <laughs> I'm still in that mindset of no, like but there, there's nothing wrong being in that mindset. Yeah, but I'm, no, I'm, just, I know. I'm just trying to make a point. Yeah, yeah. no, that's a valid point. And yes. Um I oh wait, I had something. I lost it. You're gonna talk about Oh. Well, even so while I was I, I don't really spend much time on Twitter anymore. I basically tweet like things that are coming up or whatever. Yeah. Um, I saw someone I followed and I unfollowed because of this, liked a tweet that someone else did that was a, two pictures side by side. And it was Kelly from 90210 and Topanga from Boy Meets World. Like okay. back then. Yeah, yeah. And it was like Kelly or Topanga. Yeah. Hundreds of likes. And I'm like, you're asking people which teenage child they would like to fuck. Right. But, like, I'm sure none of those people who like it or the person who posted it would give it a second thought. Sure. But, like, the mindset that is out there, that is, I mean, this is going back to the, like, Amazon cup where I'm just, like, sometimes I'm blown away by it, but then I look at my tweets from... 13 years 14 years ago and I'm like you couldn't have like if you were like Elizabeth you tweeted this about Kate Gosselin <laughs> <laughs> I would be like I will bet you $500 I did not right but I did or actually more actually not that tweet I probably would be like maybe but disappointed in myself the R word sure and yet there it was so in some ways, it should make me have more compassion for the person tweeting the Kelly or Topanga. Yeah, well... I don't know. I, I might have... There was an incident... I think we might have even talked about this on the show where uh, someone in my Twitter feed, someone, it had been revealed that he had dropped some the N-word a few times like 10 years earlier as like an 18-year-old. Someone... Wait, on your show? In my timeline, on my Twitter timeline. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, someone in my timeline. <laughs> Got it. Um, and I was appalled that he wasn't getting drug more yes. in this particular, and it was like not a music community, but like a techie kind of community. Uh huh. Um, and I was just like, I could not wrap my head around it, and I, and I still can't. Yeah. Uh, because I don't even care if you're like a dumb kid. This. Du Anyways, I don't, I don't even know why I'm bringing that up. Well, it's relevant, obviously, but, like, there's, I don't know. It's all confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I hope that we alleviated all the anxiety everyone's <laughs> feeling on this fine day where the planets are doing their thing. Um, but we'll be back for more next week. Thank you. I'm genuinely curious how new listeners found us if you are a new listener and haven't left a review bonus points bonus points very curious and uh, we appreciate each and every one of you good, good night, night. Shh.